Welcome to this video. Today I will be going over tips that you can do to better secure your Mac computer. Please keep in mind I will be listing all the tips down below in the notes as well as any important information. So please again follow along down below in the video description. For tip number one what you'll want to do is come up here to the top left corner and click on the Apple icon and go down to System Preferences and click on it. And then from here you will want to look for Security and Privacy and click on it. And then what you'll want to do is come over here and click on the General option. And the first tip is you're going to want to review your password settings. Please keep in mind that a strong, secure password consists of at least 16 characters with a combination of upper and lowercase letters, numbers, and symbols. If you are not meeting all of those requirements, your password is not safe. So the easiest thing to do is come up with a, a random phrase add some capital letters to it, some numbers and symbols, and you're good to go. Also, I would make sure that this option is checked to require a password, and I would not set the time limit any higher than 15 minutes, just so that way, if you do walk away from your computer, it will lock itself and keep it secure. Please keep in mind that if you do need to make any changes, you will need to click on this padlock to unlock it, and then after you make the change, you'll click on this lock again to lock it and save it. For tip number two, you will want to review the app settings listed right here. Now, depending on what operating system you're on, some of you may have a third option here. Most of you will have two. And you just want to make sure that you're on this option right here that says App Store and Identified Developers because that will help reduce the risk that you'll install a bad or infected program or application on your Mac computer. And so most of you should just have this setting. If you have a history of infecting your computer or installing bad programs, then I would recommend going with this top option, but that will reduce and restrict what applications you can install on your Mac computer. For tip number three, you'll want to come up here to the top and click on File Vault, and this is an option where you can encrypt the entire drive in your Mac computer. It's very useful, very handy, and every single person with a Mac computer should be using this option. And please keep in mind that this encryption is only as good as your password that we just previously talked about and so if you have a weak password it's going to be easy to gain access to your encrypted drive so again that is another reason why you need a good password and make sure that it meets all of those requirements that I already talked about this is a very useful feature because it will keep all of your information safe especially if your computer is stolen or lost you won't have to worry about someone gaining unauthorized access to your private information if file vault is not turned on Again, click on the padlock. There will be an option right here to turn it on, and then you'll need to click on the padlock again to save that change. For tip number four, you'll come up here and click on firewall, and just make sure that this is turned on. What it does is it prevents unauthorized incoming connections, and so if it's not turned on, again, click on the padlock. There will be an option to turn it on, and then click on the padlock again to save that change. For tip number five, click on privacy, and this will allow you to review all of the privacy settings on your Mac computer and so I would recommend going through every category here on the left hand column but the biggest things that you'll want to review are the location services, photos, and analytics. For maximum privacy I would make sure all of these are unchecked. For photos again I would just review if there's any applications that are using your photos it will list them here and you can manage which applications have access and which do not. And then same thing with location services, you can review what applications are using your location, but for maximum privacy, you can disable by unchecking this box at the top to make sure none of them are using your location. Again, please notice the padlock in the bottom left corner. And again, I would also recommend going through every category here in the left-hand column. For tip number six, what you'll want to do is come back up here to the top left corner and click on the Apple icon, but this time go to the App Store and click on it. When the App Store opens, come over here to the top right hand side and click on Updates. And this is just going to review and make sure that your Mac computer is up to date. If it is not, it will list any updates that are available right here for you to click on and download and install. Please keep in mind that updates are very, very important because they not only include stability updates, but they also include security updates. And so if your Mac computer is not up to date, it is not secure. So you do want to review this. They should be updating automatically, but you do want to come here periodically just to make sure that your Mac is up to date. For tip number seven, you will also want to confirm that all of your web browsers are up to date. And please keep in mind that Safari will update when you do the updates through the App Store. 
but Google Chrome and Firefox you need to check separately and so to do that when you open up Google Chrome up in the top right corner you will notice these three little dots you can click on it to open up a menu and you'll just go down to where it says help and then click on about Google Chrome now if Google Chrome is up to date you will get a check mark like this confirming that if it's not up to date it will automatically start the update for you and then you'll need to restart Google Chrome to finish that update now to check Firefox you'll do the same thing you'll open up Firefox but this time you'll go up here to the top left corner and click where it says Firefox and go down to where it says about Firefox and this will also just double check to make sure Firefox is up to date now both Google Chrome and Firefox should be updating automatically in the background but you do want to do this periodically just to confirm that both of them are up to date because again those will include security updates that will keep you safe while using the web and internet for tip number eight you will want to make sure that all of your web browsers are clean and what this means is you want to make sure there are no malicious add-ons extensions or plugins installed on any of your web browsers and so to do this we're going to first open up Safari and then up in the top left corner just click where it says Safari and go down to preferences and then after you click on preferences just make sure that you have the extensions tab selected and in the left hand column it will list any extensions that you have on your Safari web browser now yes extensions are fun and convenient but they are terrible for privacy they are terrible for security any legitimate extension can be exploited by a hacker to gain access to your computer so the best thing to do is remove all unnecessary extensions my recommendation is remove all extensions the only exception would be anything that has to do with a password keeper password manager or password vault all other extensions should be removed even if it's from a legitimate company like Pinterest because again any extension can be exploited and hijacked and these are a common common way for malware to gain access to your computer so to uninstall and remove an extension you just select it on the left hand column and then click on uninstall to remove it and also if there is an extension you absolutely cannot part ways with I would recommend at least disabling it when it's not in use to do so you just uncheck that box to disable it uh, I'm gonna leave that one checked because that one does have to do with passwords I would also strongly recommend that you leave this uh, box here in the bottom left corner checked so that way these extensions will automatically update but again I would strongly recommend that you remove all extensions with the only exception being your password keeper or password vault or password manager for Google Chrome, if I go ahead and open up Google Chrome, I'll just come up here to the top right corner and click on the three little dots and go down to where it says more tools and from there click on extensions and just like in Safari, it will list all of the extensions that I have on Google Chrome. Same thing. I would recommend removing all extensions with the only exception being anything that has to do with your passwords. Now these four are the default extensions that come with all Google Chrome installations and so for these I'm just going to disable them while they're not in use. I would strongly recommend that you do the same thing to better secure your Google Chrome web browser. For Firefox if I go ahead and open up Firefox and then come up here to the top right corner and click on the menu button and go down to where it says add-ons and over here on the left hand uh, column I'll just click on the extensions option and then before I do anything I'm just going to click on this gear icon and click on check for updates just to confirm everything's up to date and then after you've confirmed everything is up to date it's the exact same principle I would strongly recommend removing all extensions with the only exception being your password uh, keeper or password manager or password vault and so right here we can see we have Pinterest so I'm going to click on remove and then you can see that my password manager has been currently disabled while it's not in use there's an enable and disable option right here so I would strongly recommend that you disable any extensions that you keep that are not currently being used and then also in Firefox you want to click on plugins in the left hand column and I would just go through every plugin listed here in the middle column 
And over here on the right hand side, just check the drop down for each one. And if it gives you the option to change it to ask to activate, I would recommend doing that just so it's not always running in the background. And that will also reduce the plugins that can be exploited in Firefox because they're not always running in the background. So again, just go through each one, set them to ask to activate if it gives you the option to do so. If it does not, just leave it as is. For tip number nine, you will want to make sure that your Mac computer does have a good antivirus program. Yes, Macs can get infected and anyone out there still saying that Macs do not need antivirus software is wrong and not correct. And so again, you absolutely do need an antivirus program for your Mac computer. And so down below in the notes, in the video description, I will list links to four free antivirus options that you can look into. The first one being Avast, the next one being AVG, and then Avera, and then the last one being Sophos. Those are the four free ones that I recommend. But please keep in mind that paid antivirus software generally does give you better protection. And so if you do have the money, I would recommend looking into the paid version of Avast or the paid version of Sophos. Those would be my top two recommendations. As a third alternative, you could look at the paid version of uh, Bitdefender. Uh, but again, just keep in mind that the paid versions do offer better protection against ransom, uh, ransomware and zero day attacks, as well as additional features like protecting your webcam and stuff like that. But if you don't have the money, go with one of these free options because, again, your Mac does need antivirus software to keep it secure. For tip number 10, you need to scan your Mac computer with anti-malware software to pick up anything that your antivirus program may have missed. And so down below in the notes, down in the video description, I will post links to free anti-malware programs that you can run on your Mac computer. The first one being the adware removal tool from Mac. The second one being the virus scanner for Mac, also free. And then the third one being Malwarebytes, the free version you can also run on your Mac computer. And then as a fourth option, the fourth one is not free, but if you have the uh, money, I do recommend running Mac Scan as well. Please keep in mind that Mac Scan and Malwarebytes have real time uh, protection as an option, I would not recommend running the real-time protection because that is what your antivirus is for. And so if you're running two real-time protection software programs, it's going to slow your Mac down. So don't do that with Malwarebytes or MacScan. But I do recommend at least once every three months that you run these three free anti-malware software programs. And if you have the money, also run MacScan as well. Just again, to pick up anything that your antivirus program may have missed on your Mac computer. For tip number 11, I would strongly recommend that you start using a VPN, which is a virtual private network. And for those of you who do not know what that is, basically what it does is it encrypts all of the data going to and from your computer over the internet. And if you use public Wi-Fi, this is a must have. You should never ever use public Wi-Fi without a VPN because your information or your private information can be exposed to other people on that network. And so again, you must always use a VPN on public Wi-Fi, but even at home, especially with the loss of net neutrality, I strongly recommend that you use a VPN just because it will better increase your privacy and security of your Mac computer. Now, as far as free solutions for a VPN, there are two that I recommend. The first one being from Proton VPN. Again, I will post the links down below in the notes. The second free VPN that I would recommend is from CyberGhost. You can see there's a small link right here that says download the free version. Please keep in mind that free versions are going to be slower than paid versions. But out of the options that are available for free, these are the two best ones that I recommend because other free VPNs will either cap your data, will be even slower, will have ads or will collect your data, which completely defeats the purpose of using a VPN. If you have the money, I would strongly recommend looking into a paid VPN because it will be faster and have more features. And so the paid ones that I recommend would either be the paid version of ProtonVPN or NordVPN or ExpressVPN. And there's also a paid version of CyberGhost as well. Again, all the links will be posted down below in the notes. Either way, you need to use a VPN, especially if you use public Wi-Fi, and even at home, you should start using it to increase the security of your Mac. 
For tip number 12, you need to back up the data on your Mac computer just in case it's ever lost, stolen, broken. And I do recommend using a cloud service just because it is off-site and automatically encrypted to keep it safe. Using a thumb drive or external drive is good, but again, those are on-site and often not encrypted. And so I do again recommend using a cloud service to have those features. Now as far as free online backup solutions, you do have some limited options with iCloud. Uh, it is very limited, only five gigabytes of free uh, iCloud storage space. If you want more, you do have to pay for it. Additional options are Google Drive or Dropbox, but those can also be limited space and they're not automated, which means you have to constantly remember to manually do the backup. And so if you have the money, some paid options that I would recommend that are automated and give you more options would be either Carbonite or Mosey, which is owned by Carbonite. But the top recommendation that I can give you is from Backblaze because this is automated. It's unlimited space. It will also back up any external or thumb drives that you have plugged into your Mac computer. And so it's, it's very useful. It's very handy. You get a lot for what you're paying for. But again, if you don't have the money, use Dropbox, Google Drive, or iCloud. It's better than nothing. Either way, you do need to be backing up your information on the cloud to keep it safe in case anything does happen to your Mac computer. For tip number 13, you need to be using a password keeper, password manager, or password vault. And the reason why is because you need to use a different strong password for everything. And trying to remember all of those passwords is pretty much impossible. And so a password manager will do that for you. And it will often fill in the password for you as well. So you don't have to type it in every time. And so some options that I would recommend would be starting off with Dashlane that does have a free version. And so if you're looking for a free solution, Dashlane is a great option to look into. If you have the money to pay for the paid version, some additional features that will give you is it will sync your passwords across all of your devices. Different uh, free option you can look into is KeePass. Again, I'll post the links to all of these down below in the notes. And so those are the two free options. Some alternative options you can also look into is LastPass and 1Password. And if you do have the money, I would recommend looking into the premium services just again, because having it sync the passwords across all of your devices can be very handy. But if you don't have the money, just use the free version. Either way, you absolutely need to be using a password manager to store all of your passwords because you have to use a different password for every single service in order to stay safe. For tip number 14, what you will want to do is go through and remove any and all programs and apps that you do not use. One of the most common ways for malware to get onto a Mac computer is through the applications or programs that you install, especially if you install a bad application or program. And so what I recommend is that you open up the Finder and go to the Applications tab here on the left-hand column. And then here in the middle, it will list all of the applications and programs you have on your Mac computer. I would just go through the entire list and remove any and all applications that you know you no longer use or are just junk. And so, for example, if I wanted to remove Skype because I do not use Skype, what I would do is just click on it and drag it over to the trash can to delete and uninstall it from the Mac computer. That's everything for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please post them down below and I will respond as quickly as possible. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.